Today we're diving into the mysterious and haunting realm of the ten strangest last words spoken before executions. Let's take a journey and uncover the mysterious final words spoken by these ten individuals who met their fate with a captivating mix of emotions and intrigue. At number ten is Jeffrey David Matthews, accused in 1994 for the killing of his 77-year-old great-uncle Otis Earl Short, shared his last words just before his execution via lethal injection at the Oklahoma State Penitentiary. During this time he maintained a defiant stance, insisting on his innocence, and repeatedly sought clemency from the governor. Moments before his passing, Jeffrey flashed a grin at his family and remarked, Seems like the governor's phone isn't working. Still haven't received that call. At number nine is George Appel. During a robbery in a Brooklyn restaurant, Police Lieutenant Charles J. Kemmer arrived, just as Appel and his accomplice did a theft. Following a scuffle between the attackers and the New York City police officer, prosecutors stated that Appel shot Kemmer three times. George Appel faced a death sentence for the murder of a police officer, leading to his execution in the electric chair in 1928. His final words have since gained notoriety. With a calm demeanor, he looked at the men surrounding him and said, well, gentlemen, you are about to see a baked appell. At number eight is James Lewis Jackson. James Lewis Jackson, aged 47, was executed by lethal injection in 2007 in Huntsville, Texas, for the brutal murders of his wife and stepdaughters. Jackson had a history of violence, having previously served time for shooting his children's grandfather. He also pawned his wife's belongings for drug money after the murders. As the finality of his fate closed in, he did not to anger nor to regret, but to a quiet acceptance. His last words, see you all on the other side. Now, at number seven is Robert Charles Towery. Towery, aged 47, faced execution for robbery and murder in Paradise Valley, Arizona on September 4th, 1991. Towery spent the last two decades of his life on death row in Arizona. As his time drew near, he chose to direct his final words towards those he held dearest, saying, I love my family. His next words, however, were less conventional. Potato, 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 he repeated, leaving a strangely poetic and puzzling end to his life. At number six is James French. James French, executed in 1966, had a sardonic wit till his last breath. French was no stranger to the dark side of life, his crime being a grim tale of cold-blooded murder. Yet his final words, delivered with a chilling sense of humour, have gone down in history. Hey, fellas! How about this for a headline for tomorrow's paper? French fries, he quipped, a macabre play on his own name and fate. A grim joke for a grim end. At number five is Johnny Frank Garrett. Johnny Frank Garrett, executed in 1992, used his final words to voice his defiance. Convicted for a crime that shocked the nation, his case stirred heated debates about the justice system. As he stood on the precipice of his life, facing the inevitability of his execution, Garrett's final words echoed his unyielding spirit. He said, I'd like to thank my family for loving me and taking care of me, and the rest of the world can kiss my ass. A raw, unfiltered sentiment that encapsulated his feelings towards a world he believed had failed him, a world he was leaving behind. At number four, Robert Alton Harris. Robert Alton Harris, executed in 1992, left this world with a poetic utterance. Known for a life of crime that culminated in a chilling double murder, Harris was a man whose name would be etched into the annals of infamy. His final statement, delivered with a calmness that belied the gravity of his situation, was, You can be a king or a street sweeper, but everyone dances with the grim reaper an ominously beautiful phrase that serves as a chilling reminder of our shared mortality, a chilling reminder of our shared fate. At number three is Thomas J. Grasso, executed in 1995. He had a peculiar request for his final words. His final words, though, were not an apology or a plea for mercy. Instead, they were a complaint about his last meal. I did not get my SpaghettiOs, I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. His statement, odd as it may seem, reflects a surreal dissatisfaction with a minor detail amidst the gravity of his situation. Was it a final act of defiance, a humorous jab at the absurdity of his predicament, or perhaps a simple expression of disappointment? At number two, we have Grover Cleveland Redding. Executed in 1921, he used his final words as a puzzle. Grover Cleveland Redding, who believed himself to be the Prince of Abyssinia and was convinced of a mission to repatriate his people, suffered from mental instability. 
His involvement in an anti-government riot resulting in the deaths of two of his followers led to a death sentence. His last words left a big question in everyone's mind. I have something to say, but not at this time, he declared. His words echoed, leaving an eternal puzzle for the universe. Lastly, we have Jimmy Glass. On June 12, 1987, at the age of 25, Glass became the 78th person executed in the United States since 1977. As he was strapped into the electric chair, Glass wore a grin. When asked for a final statement, his last words were, Yeah, I think I'd rather be fishing. Corrections Commissioner C. Hall Phelps pronounced him dead at 12.14am. Two years prior to his execution, Glass gained attention as a petitioner in the Supreme Court, arguing that electrocution as a method of execution violated the Eighth and Fourteenth Amendments to the United States Constitution, considering it cruel and unusual punishment. However, despite Glass's case, the court dismissed it with a five. Four majority ruling affirming the constitutionality of electrocution as an authorised method of execution.